She likes gossip. another episode of eye to eye with jesse dubai so i'm really excited to have this episode because finally i have a full open out and proud bisexual guy here in bed with me when i met this guy uh at the beginning at the end of last year around december when i came when it was my last trip to New York, I visited his podcast, the Bi Guys podcast. That is Ian Fidance, and he is here with us today. Let's give him a random applause. Hello, hi everybody. Thank you so much for having me on. That's me. My pleasure, baby. So, there. Tell Wonderful. me. How was your day? And why the fuck you bitch took forever to get here? We were supposed to do the podcast at 2 p.m. And then I tell him, can we move it to noon? And he's like, yes. And then yesterday, he texted me back saying, can we move it back to 2? And I'm like, okay, sure. Can someone tell me what time it is right here? It's 3 well, I will say, you know, it's uh, daylight savings time. So, you know, time isn't real. My ass. The U.S. Senate's getting rid of daylight saving times. I'm just ahead of the curve. And so it really should be 2.30. So that will be horrible. Time, right? No, actually, that happened to me. The opposite thing. Hold on, guys. Let me put a pillow right here. Yeah, this is free. That's the show you're going to pay yes, for. Yes, if you guys want to see more underneath my dress, go to my OnlyFans. That is OnlyFans.com slash TSJessie. So, the, thing, the same thing happened to me. Well, not the same thing happened to me, but something like that happened to me yesterday with Lisa Ann. I had it in my schedule, in my calendar, that I she was going to come at 2. And mm -hmm. she always arrives like 15 minutes early. She's always on time. And I was running behind. And I called Lainey, my publicist. And um, I waited until like the last second. And I'm like, wait, it's already 2.10. And she hasn't arrived. So I'm like, hey, Lainey, did I told you 3 or 2 p.m. for Lisa? And then she says, at 3. And I'm like, yes. I love that. Because I was like, I was all stressed. I was like yeah. doing my makeup quick because I'm like, oh, my God, she's here. She's going to be here by 2.10 when I was like done with my makeup. Mm -hmm. I'm like, she should be here. And then I find out that she's not arriving until 3. She ended up arriving at 2.45. And as soon as she got here, I set up the lights and we started the podcast. But that was so nice because I had an right. extra time. Well, that's what I was hoping for today, to give you some extra time to get ready. You look beautiful, so it all worked out for the best. I do apologize. I got caught up with another podcast this morning and uh, I had an appointment in the city. I had to go back home and, you know, what can you do? What can you do? But I do have to... Um, you know, correct you on something. I'm not wearing any makeup. This is just how I woke up. Oh just, my goodness. Just like this. This is like, I go to bed like this and uh -huh. I wake up like this. Wow. I wish, yeah. bitch, I wish. So, tell me about your podcast. The Bi Guys Podcast. Yes. And it's a podcast. I was reading on your basically like, what we call the synopsis of, mm -hmm. um, like the long line yeah like the yeah the um description Basic i was looking gist. for that word yeah just the gist of mm -hmm. what it is about it's about basically you guys being very proud and you know about your sexuality mm -hmm. and you know talking about you know ta other topics other than just being bi but that's mm -hmm. basically the whole yeah yeah, well, uh, you know, me and my co-host, Zach Amico, uh, one of the funniest comics. He's so quick and fast. The network we're on is Gas Digital, which uh, has a bunch of different podcasts, um, and it's home to, like, a couple, like, uh, real ridiculous 
podcasts like Legion of Skanks. It's like the most offensive podcast in the world and real ass podcasts and like MMA podcasts. So it has a very like uh, male fan base. Mm -hmm. And so our show is great because we're very much, we always go for the joke. We can be offensive, but we're sweet. And it's just nice to get like a different perspective and inject it into that like heavy male kind of stratosphere. And uh, people really have been responding well. And it's so funny because we get a lot of feedback from guys that you would never expect to be bisexual or to have had gay experiences that have been like holding it inside for a long time. And they reach out to us and like your show helped me feel more comfortable about it. It made me realize that I don't have to be this, you know, um, that just being with a man doesn't make me gay forever. You know, I don't have to be this like kind of queer, or whatever I can be, you know, an auto mechanic and still have experience with guys. And it's just no big deal. So the, the show is called Bye Guys. It's kind of like a joke, but uh, that's not the only topic. Like a talk double about. sense. Yeah, like a double entendre, you know. Yeah. And uh, it's just like a silly hook. But really, we talk about news stories. We talk about anything. The best episodes are when the conversation just goes to wherever it goes and we've you know fun along the way but it uh i don't know it's kind of to show people that you know bisexual guys are out there and they're not kind of the stereotypical idea of what you would think a uh bi guy would be you know because we're both bi but he has a wife i have a girlfriend we like very much gravitate towards women but you know in the past we've you know haven't shied away from you know, seeing the uh, fruits of the labor on the other side. And you know I mean? somehow you trip with the box, and when you least notice, you ended up sitting on a dick. Yeah, I mean, hey, shit happens, you know? How are you gonna know you don't like something unless you uh, yeah, unless try Unless you it, try you know? it. See, I don't like that with Dicks a Dicks are like things. heroin. You gotta try it to know you don't want it, and sometimes you get addicted and you have a hard time getting off, you know? Yeah, you took that away from me. I was gonna say something like that, but ex yeah, you know, you know, um, you don't can't say you don't like it until you try it. I say that a lot. I'm like, how would I know that I don't like it until I try it? Yeah. Until it's drugs. Like when oh, I have yeah. friends that they're like, or people that they're like, hey, you want to try some Molly? You want to try some ecstasy? Mm -hmm. You want to try some? I don't know these drugs that are coming out these days. And I'm like, no. How do you know you don't like it until you yeah, try? I'm yeah. like. Because I know that if I like it, I will become an addict. Oh, That's totally. how I know myself. That I'm yeah. like, if I like something, I will become an addict. Oh yeah. I got. I started smoking, just because I saw my dad smoking, and I was like, that looks so cool. I want to try. Me too. And I I'm couldn't addicted. smoke. I couldn't smoke at first because you know the smoke will right, choke right. me and stuff. But I thought I look cool smoking. Yeah, yeah. And the, it was. It took one friend that she's like, because I will smoke and just leave it in my mouth and then mm -hmm. blow it out and she's looking at me she was just staring at me and i was like she's staring at me she, she thinks i'm cool yeah yeah and she's like you don't know how to smoke do you? that happened to me really? i was like 14 and i was smoking with older kids and i just held it in my mouth and I'd breathe it out and they just called me out in front of everyone they go are you gonna actually smoke that or just keep the smoke in your mouth and i was like i don't really know how and they like taught me and I was addicted ever since. She did the same. She's like, yeah. you're supposed uh, she's, she's like, you're supposed to. So I'm like, really? Yeah. She's like, yeah, like. And I'm so addicted to inhaling that I can't smoke cigars because I want to inhale it and they make me sick. I hate cigars, but I love cigarettes. I, I don't drink, I don't do drugs. Very addictive personality, but I cannot stop smoking cigarettes. Me neither. I yeah. cannot stop. Uh, it's really, really hard. Like, I've slowed it down. Mm -hmm. uh, I make it hard for myself. Of Like, in my house, I only smoke outside. So if it's really, really cold and chilly, I'm yeah. like, do I really want to? Oh, I do it. And I think, I make myself work hard for it. Like, yeah. okay, so if you decide to smoke in the house, it has to be in the bathroom. So you don't stink up the house. Because I think, you know, after you smoke, yeah. how it stinks up the place. So I'm like, I have a window, I'll seal everything, and I'll smoke in the bathroom. So my job is, okay, on Friday, you're going to wash the whole bathroom. Like, literally, you know, walls and everything. Mm. And, I won't, and I did that for, like, the last year that I've been living in my house. And 
every time, like every week, when I actually wipe the water, there's like this yellow. Oh god. From the city that I'm like, yeah. Oh my god, and this goes into my lungs. Yeah, yeah. The other day, I was. I was a, I smoked in my room in the hotel because it was really cold in Atlanta, so I put a towel in the bathroom, you know, little. Oh my god! I don't You're do, like a teenager smoking weed in their parents' house. Yeah, but I seen people that they put like you know a plastic bag on right. around the yes. fire. I've seen that yeah. alarm, and they'll smoke here in the room, mm -hmm. and then when they leave. You know, they'll do whatever to like mask the smoke or right. whatever. What I do is like, okay, if I'm gonna smoke, I really don't wanna have the smoke linger and the smell, so I'll go into the bathroom. But this time there was no window, it was just like this air right, And I was like, right. I don't want to smoke and the neighbors smell it. So I got a little face towel and I got it wet. And then with a pen, I like in the little, you know, yeah, yeah. That was the little things, you know, you see. What would you, what do you call those? So they understand. Vents? Yeah, in the yes. vents. Yeah, the you know, the little, the little metals on the vent. Yeah. I stuck a, a pen, you know, to like keep it there. And I was there for what? Five days in Atlanta in that bathroom. And you know, when I finally left and I took that rag mm -hmm. down, there was a sort like you 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 spread it and there was a circle. A, I mean a circle, a square, a oh perfectly yellow square. That alone just made me even not the one. That's smoke. your lungs. Yeah. So yeah. like that because you know on the other the bed was sucking. Right. So right. It was sucking, and I was like, oh my god, I need to stop smoking. That's so funny because that's so much work, and it would have been way easier to just go downstairs and smoke outside. Not when I was in the 30th uh, floor. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, whenever I'm in a hotel, I really enjoy going outside, smoking, and I like talk to random strangers, and I, I just love cigarette. There's nothing. I, I was just in Utah, and I was skiing, and we were at this like mansion with uh, a hot tub and overlooking these mountains and it just felt so good getting like a cup of coffee in the morning seeing the sun over the mountains smoking a cigarette and i was like this is what it's about you know i'm gonna die in two years but this is what it's about you know my <laughs> lungs are as black as your dress but this is what it's about yeah my grand i was speaking with my grandmother earlier and which is that's one other reason that I was not too worried about you coming late because I was like, you know, taking advantage of you being tardy to talk with her. You're welcome. And then she looks at me <laughs> and then she looks at me and she's like, why are you smoking? Why do you smoke? That's bad for you. You know, mm -hmm. that can kill you. And I'm like, grandma, you never smoked. You never drank and you were not a hoe. And here you are almost dying every month. Yeah. Everything is failing on you. If it's going to fail on me, I'm like, it kind of sounds shitty to say this, but it's like, I rather say I lived it rather than like, yes. I did it. Yes. You know? My mother, my grandmother and my dad gets mad at, you know, the thought that my mom and I have. But like one time we had like a scare, like, you know, the topic came to, to the table of us talking about like you know cancer and stuff of like course. we need to you know do a checkups my mom like breast all that stuff and me and my mama we were talking and then she just said she's like mija i'm just letting you know if at any moment you know they find something or i have something that you know requires me to get chemotherapy or a treatment that is going to deteriorate me little by little in order in hopes to you know, heal. I want to let you know that please don't go against my wishes, but let me be like, yeah. let me die yeah. whenever I have to die. Mm -hmm. Let me enjoy my time. Don't not force me to get any chemo. Right, right. And I was like, mom, I'm on the same boat with you. Yeah. Like, you know, if anything happens to me and you know, you guys can revive me, don't okay. let me go. Let I'm the extreme. Go. I'm like, Hey, if I break a finger, kill me. <laughs> hey, if, some, if I if I break a leg, if, if I get a common cold, put a gun in the back of my head. Let's do it. <laughs> put me out of my misery. I'm sure you were like, no, I shouldn't. No, we shouldn't joke about that because I've had friends that have committed suicide. So yeah, it's, it's not. A, funny. I, I but think still, it's, it is. I it think is it's, something that you say. Yeah, I I think it's okay to joke about stuff because it shows that you have um, uh, almost like a respect for it in a way because if you take things too seriously you can I think um, 
get caught up in emotions. So I yeah. feel like if you joke about stuff, it. I know I use humor as a way to diffuse my scared or upset feelings. You know, I, I mean? do that all the time. Yeah. So I totally yeah. get you. Sometimes when I'm like really upset or really scared or or some feelings that I'm not ready for people to like, mm -hmm. for me to deal with with people. Yeah. Like, hey, are you mad? No, I'm not mad. Like, don't you see my happy face? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's All like a good things. like way to diffuse a little oh, bomb, you don't know? Don't you fucking see my face, I am mad, but yeah. just playing it along, because yeah. I don't want to bitch your fucking nose up, you know? That's the same face you had when I walked in late. <laughs> wait, wait, what was that face? It was like... Oh my god, I wanted to run away. I was like, that's what like getting into? my... Uh-huh. You're dead to me. I know, that's what I thought you were going to say. I was like, oh god. I should have brought flowers or something to make up for it. Just bring me a joint and I will be happy. I know, I know. Well, you called so, the wrong guy. you don't do drugs, just smoke cigarettes. Because I was about to ask you, do you smoke weed? No. And if you do, how did you feel when they made it legal here? But then... I know. You don't smoke, which is good. No weed, no mushrooms, totally sober. Cigarettes and coffee. And fucking, but I've put a stop to that. That's an addiction in and of itself, but uh, I feel like a lot of people when they quit drinking and doing drugs, they get addicted to other things to like replace it. Yeah. I know so many friends, and, and this happened to me too when I quit drinking initially, it was like, I'm in the gym four hours a day, you know? I'm also addicted to like exercise. I don't know if you can tell now, I haven't exercised in a while, but I, uh, I have a bike. Look at that. I have a, I have a bicycle and I, I ride that, and I ride that alcoholically like non I was like up to a hundred miles a week during the pandemic you know just like so addicted to it but uh right now I'm addicted to Ben and Jerry's ice cream that's kind of yeah. I you I get Ben and Jerry's ice cream every time I'm like depressed yeah what's your flavor what's your go-to um uh cookie dough Ooh. and um rocky Oh, ro oh, uh, Rocky Road. Yes. Yes. I'm I'm fish food and uh, I like Talenti mint chocolate chip. So Those are really good flavors. Mm -hmm. So yeah, when I um going back to like you know addictions, yeah, like I get when you like when you were talking about like sex addiction, like how do you like stop yourself from mm -hmm. something. Like I'm in the same boat, like. You know, because of my job and stuff also requires me to like, you know, have sex with other performers mm -hmm. for my own productions and stuff. But due to like, you know, people not, more people getting into the industry mm -hmm. and we have protocols, we have, you know, rules set. They're not really basically like rules that the government put in place, but right, we right. put it in place mm -hmm. to keep us safe, to, you know, keep the industry going. So with all these new performers coming into the industry, like with OnlyFans, with mm -hmm. fans, all of those, what they're doing is like they're just hooking up with people, having sex with random people, recording it and uploading it without even asking the proper paperwork and all that stuff. And that it's the big no, no. Like I've told yeah. my friends because I'm like, the girl is saying, yes, you can have sex with me and record me and upload it. But then tomorrow when she's over and she's home, she's going to be like, I don't want that video up. And right, then you post right. it without her consent and without the proper paperwork, right. you can go to jail or you can have your account suspended. Right. Well, they did. And I, I was like, I told you. Yeah. I already had my papers before, like, you know, OnlyFans started asking for them. So anyway. Well, I, I can't imagine how scary that is. You know, because I, I think the appeal of some of that stuff is like you're you you're with like a real person, a non performer. It makes it more like when people watch, you're like, That could be me one day. Yeah, you know, yeah. And I just get so creeped out about the testing aspect of like, you know, possibly getting uh STI from someone or someone isn't tested properly, or they lie because they just want to have sex with you. That's how I got my first STDs. Oh, let's talk about STDs. Really? Yes. When did you get that? Let me tell you the story. Do you of... have any now? No. No? Hold... Let when me were you tell tested? you the story. Okay, I'm so interested. Let me tell you the story. So, this is the story 
of how I got my first two. Oh my God. STDs ever. Wow. In my life, at 30 years. For this, we need to go back in time when I was younger. We need to go back in time when I was younger uh -huh. and, you know, having advice from my dad. You know, my dad was always very open, open-minded. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and he was like, you know, in three minutes, in three, 30 seconds that someone puts their penis or you put your penis inside someone, you know, you can be fucked, you can catch an right. SD, blah, blah, blah. The most beautiful apple in the, you know, bowl is not always the most pure one in the inside. Right, right. Uh, if someone has something, they're not going to tell you because they're going to drag you down with them the mm -hmm. way they were dragged by someone else. All this advice. So since the first, I, since the first times I had sex, because I had sex or I had like little things doing when I was like 13, 14, 15, 16, you know, yeah. all those, but it was like part of like being molested or, mm. you know, stuff like that in my life. So when I actually started having sex, which was like 16, when it was like full on hardcore sex that I, mm -hmm. I wanted it, right? I wouldn't have sex or suck dick without a condom both right, ways right right the whole time the first time that i ever had sex without a condom and was for what's with was with christian triple x for my porn with ruby wow like when he, i i was putting it when he was putting it in my butt uh -huh. i could feel that like near his, the tip, the shaft of his, of his right, right. near his balls at the top, there was like a whisker, like a hair sticking out that he didn't shave properly. Uh -huh. It was just there, like, you know, the whiskers right here? Yeah, yeah. So I could feel it because there was no condom, so I could feel everything. And I'm like, hold on, it just keeps, it, that little, right, it, right. it reminded me of that story of the princess and the pea. Like on the, <laughs> all those mattresses. Yeah, it was I the princess steal, and the penis. Uh, yes, <laughs> I should, I, I should, Trademark now. Okay. So I own it. <laughs> what? No, you're gonna give me some scroll over that one. So I was feeling that thing, you know, and it took me a little bit to actually understand. And Christian is big, mm -hmm. so it was. It took me a while, but yeah, that was the first time that I ever had sex without a condom in the Did industry. Did that take you out of the moment, or because it was so like raw and close, it made it more enjoyable for you? I, or were you too nervous because that was, was like nervous. your first time ever with that? I was just too nervous because of the camera and like yeah. just like the same thing that I tell myself every time I bought them. Like I'll be bent over like this, uh -huh. like, like like that, uh -huh. like that. Yes. And I'll be like, ah, oh, yes, uh -huh. yes, yes. And then in my head, all I'm thinking is, please don't shit. Please oh, don't God. shit. Please don't shit. Oh God. Oh okay. God. Don't shit. Don't Look shit. at you, you just pulled the curtain back. <laughs> yeah, because that's all I'm thinking. Or well, that's very real. I can imagine that's how a lot of people feel. Of course. Yeah. I mean, we're dealing with assholes. What do I expect come out of there? Chicken and ham? Of course not. Well, well maybe chicken and ham, but process. Arroz con pollo. <laughs> Arroz con pollo. So, it was just weird, you know? Anyway, so that was the first time that I had sex. And ever since then, I've always had sex protected and then... Uh, all my partners before we went to have sex without condoms or stuff. We, the proof of love was not have sex with each other anymore. The proof of love was let's go get tested. If you really right, love me, right, go get right, tested right. or let's go get tested. Right. Because I'm not gonna be risking my health and also my career. Because at this moment it was also my career too, you mm -hmm. know. And I could affect other people. And um, when I was Nightmare. shooting for King the um, a scare happened you know that someone tested positive for hiv so they had to do a hold hold on the um, industry for like a few days until they figure out anyway with all this said i've been clean my whole life very 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 Christine. meticulous you yes. know it, now we fast forward to march before covid mm. so i'm in vegas for AVN, we I do the red carpet, blah blah blah. I have a shoot with one performer that I have worked with in the past. He's not fully in the industry, and he's not like shot for any major companies, but like with other 
all the fans performers and with me so I asked I told him to get tested he said he got tested then he comes out after ABN we do our video and you know that you know at that time that was like when COVID started so I stood mm -hmm. in Las Vegas for I want to say a three four days after ABN mm -hmm. and then that's when the airports started closing and people needed yeah, to start yeah. like going back home so I flew back home after that shooting with him and other performers he was the last one I'm so glad he was the last one I fly back home and because I wasn't working or anything I go um, back home I'm with my husband I'm working on my webcaming and all this stuff in one day like i'm looking and i'm like wait what? oh no yeah i mean in my mind i thought or in my head i thought like maybe it's i play with a toy too rough right you right. know and maybe it's a fungus from the toy not being right, clean right. enough or something and it's not that like you know there either was like warts and all this stuff growing on me but it was just like you know your body it's like yeah. okay there's something going on so i went got tested and when I went in the go get tested, the doctor comes back and she's like, well, your HIV came out negative. I'm like, oh, I really know that. Mm -hmm. And, and um, your uh, chlamydia came negative, but you tested positive for gonorrhea and syphilis. Oh my God. It was a syphilis and chlamydia, and then I was clean. Ah! It was one, of, it was two basically. And I was like- It must've been so scary. I went through so many emotions. Oh yeah. And I think this is the first time I'm actually talking about it. So um, I just stood like this and I'm like, okay. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And I my mind immediately started going back like who could have so given it to me? Of fucking. And also did I give it to someone else? Uh, How long have I had this with? Right. And by now, keep in mind by this moment it's February, March, April, May, June. By this moment, we're on June, June about to be in July, which is right. when, like, let's say that the flower, mm -hmm. you know, bloomed mm -hmm. that I noticed. So um, I go to the clinic, you know, the nurse leaves, and when she comes back, I had already, like, sent messages to, like, okay, so you, we need to talk, I need to tell you something. And later, that's when she comes back and tells me like, cause she already told me the HIV test. Then she comes back and this time she tells me like the, um, the results of the other test. And at first like I looked at her like, hmm. And then I started laughing, like laughing my ass off. Yeah. I was like, no way, hold on. And then she's like, why are you laughing? You're like one of the first persons, or if not the only one that I've seen get laugh. this right, result right. from. And she's like, what? I'm like, well, you see, for the last few months, I've been fighting with my husband. Don't go to the gym, rolling around with but your teammates because he draws you G2 training. Right. You're going to bring COVID, you know, like my immune you're system. Made, you're so safe about all that. And then you end up with That's sickness. what I told her. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. here I am thinking that COVID's right. going to kill us. We're going to die. And... Here I am, living with these diseases in right. my body for all this long. And then that's when he hit me. After I, like, I left, I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. now let's get serious. Let's talk to people. Let's see what are what do I need to do. Then the lady uh, tells me, here's just take this medication. No sex with no one for seven days and you'll be fine. But still, come back in two weeks to check your levels and right. all that stuff. So I went back and everything was you know, leveled out and everything was negative again and it's been negative. And does that stuff stay with you dormant and it can come out later or does that medicine knock it out for good? It leaves because it leaves antibodies in your system, mm -hmm. but it leaves like, like for example, right now COVID or PrEP, that just mm -hmm. leaves that one little amount for mm -hmm. your system to like fight it or recognize that it's... Right, right. So you can't have a breakout no. or anything. It's no. not like herpes where no. it goes away and then... No, herpes, it. you gotcha. keep it. But as long as your immune system is fighting it, right. you know, and you have a healthy immune system, like you don't get a cold, you don't mm -hmm. get like, you know, just even a, a, a sudden cold of like from one day to another, right, that can like right, trigger right. 
yeah. they break up because your immune system is mm -hmm. fighting other diseases and it's basically so it's so it's basically like syphilis and gonorrhea while it sounds super scary it when taken care of properly yeah no big deal that's why it's there in stds in the rice why right. because everybody a lot of people now they're on prep i'm on prep i'm on prep mm -hmm. so therefore they don't use condoms why yes because they're on prep and they cannot catch hiv or transmit it to anyone else anymore but the question is, what about HIV, gonorrhea, syphilis? Yeah. And the answer that I've gotten from some people is, girl, you just go to the clinic, have your yeah. medication, and within seven days, you'll be fine. Right. And I'm like, bitch, you talk about it like it's so cold. Well, it yeah. kind of is. It just lasts seven days, and you're fine. And I'm like, yeah, but for me, those seven days costed me money. It costed yeah. me, yeah, and you also get in an STD, it's uh, it takes a toll on it's emotionally your, draining. Emotional draining because I did feel dirty. Yeah. I did feel like I fail all the teachings from my right, father and all this right, stuff. Right. But then I realized that once I spoke with my husband and I told him like, babe, I tested positive for this and this, and I'm so sorry. I just yeah, I yeah, swear yeah. like I tried to protect myself and I did everything. I, I literally I feel like I look like him like. <laughs> yeah. But then he said, babe, it's okay. Don't cry. Don't worry. This is your business. This is your work. So you're exposed to it. You know, mm -hmm. the only thing that you can do now is just take care of it. Yeah. Take care of it. And, you know, I'll go get tested and go get a Mickey. Does that does that stuff spread only anally? No, it spreads can throughout. It, can you get it from having oral sex? It depends. Mm -hmm. The thing is, like for example, if the person that you're having sex with has let's say in this case, chlamydia in the rectum, but this person is giving you a blowjob or you're sucking their penis, no, it will not transmit it to you unless mm -hmm. the virus has spread it, you know, right. throughout okay, the body. Okay. But if it's like the first stages, mm -hmm. which is like, you know, you that person got that disease like in the rectum, then it takes a while for it to like, for yeah, how long does to, it like, take to spread? It just depends on the person. It just mm -hmm. depends on the disease and how long mm -hmm. have you been having it and all right, that stuff. Right. Uh, I did look into it because, you know, like when you get diagnosed with something like this or, you know, just even a cold or what, you're like Google, you know? Course, so obviously yeah. I was very scared and I was really mad, obviously, because I was like, I've been. If I would have been, if I would have cut it when I was like, you know, hooking up with a stranger, you know, like mm -hmm. meeting someone and then just having sex with them without worry or I was under the influence of drugs. Okay, sure. I get it. It right. was. You were being like so My sick. fault. Yeah. Like, but when I was like, you know, being very, very careful and this happens, then that just pissed me off. So that made me even be more, even more careful because mm -hmm. the person that I did it with, they brought me the test. Mm -hmm. They, and my mistake was that because we worked together before, <coughs> I just saw the test real quick and it said negative, negative, negative. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but I didn't really have the time to check the dates and realize that the 10 has been changed to a 18. That motherfucker. Really? Yes. Oh, damn. So did you have to send out a memorandum of like, don't work with this dude? He's a scumbag. No. No? No, because I spoke with him. Obviously, I was really mad. But this is my problem. I have a very good, big heart. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want it to affect him. And right, he didn't right. know. He had sex with a trans girl that also lied to him. So mm. he didn't know. Uh, he did change the numbers. But he said, you know, I didn't think nothing was going to happen. Like, you know. Why did he change the numbers then? Because his test had expired and he needed money for the rent. Oh. So I was paying for half of that. And obviously he wasn't going to have $300 just to pay for the testing, just to work with me. Uh. So I understand because I've been in that situation. Yeah. I wouldn't do what he did, but I understood him. Obviously yeah. I got mad. I, you know, banned him from my life. I'm like... You know, you could have affected me. And you could yeah. have affected my husband. Like, if you would have needed... Did you your need... husband get it? No. Oh, wow. No, because I, by the time, like, I had it, let's say, like, I had it in my system for, like, a month. 
maybe month and a half. And those were the times like when I had sex with my husband. But then because like we got so busy, him with Jimmy, mm -hmm. with uh, working and then the plane, I didn't feel like having sex, you know, with it under schedules and stuff. So by the time, basically, like I was saying, the flower like bloomed, right, right, or right. like I you guys became asymptomatic, gotcha. we were not gotcha. anymore um, active, but still, he still went to get tested. Of and um, anyone that I saw in between got tested and they all tested negative. Nice. It was like my body knew automatically, like, okay, babe, like, we're not feeling good, let's just not. Because for some reason, like, there was this guy that, you know, we're like, okay, let's come over tomorrow so we can finally do the video. This happened and we couldn't make it. Right. Then, okay, for come the next day, this happened, didn't make it. Yeah, And, yeah, like, yeah. it was, like, something that it was telling me. And that was another reason that I went to get this. I'm like, I feel like the universe is trying to tell me right, something. Right, right, like, yeah. I need to listen. And that's when I'm like, you know what, before I mess with anyone else, like, let me go check. Yeah. So I went, go, got checked, I went to get tested, now everything is clean, now every time I work with someone, I double check, I triple check, mm. I'm very, very cautious about it. You have like a jeweler's eye to like look to see if any numbers change. Yeah, <laughs> and also even like hooking up, like even though I don't hook up, but like say, you know, if I was to hook up with a guy and he wanted to, you know, be with me, then I'm like, okay, let's do a video, as long as I can make a video, sure, we can hook mm. up, because for me that's still work. Right. You'll get, you know, to bust an up and I'll get to make video for my con my mm -hmm. followers. That desire even like decreased because I'm like sure I can have a right, really hot right. guy come and play with me even with the condom but at the same time it's like what if the condom breaks? Yeah. What if he has like herpes somewhere that I can't that I'm not aware and mm -hmm. just by touching like I got so yeah. panicked and now it's so hard to be horny and a sex addict and also a hypochondriac at yeah. the same time. You know, like it, it sucks. Have you ever had any STDs or any scare like that? No. I hope you never do. Me I'm too. Not on those wood. things. I've been safe. Even when I was like blackout drunk, I'd always wear a condom. I remember one time I was having sex in my apartment. I was about to have sex and I was like blackout drunk. And I was like, I gotta go get a condom. And I didn't even put on clothes, I just wore underwear. And I dr I brought my keys, drove drunk to the Wawa to go get condoms. I go in, I had no money, I come out of a blackout, I'm shirtless in my underwear, there's Wawa employees like laughing at me. And I'm like, if I get AIDS, it's your fault, Wawa. And then I just like leave, go home. I, there was a car blocking me in so I had to like drive up on the lawn, go in. We didn't have sex because I couldn't get condoms and we just passed out. And the next day I saw my neighbor and they're like, why is the lawn turfed? And I was like, there's some real jerks out there, drunk driving, I guess. And it was me. It was you. Yeah, but I came out of a blackout yelling to at, not even at the employees, like, hey, Margaret, hey, Matt. I was like, wah, wah. If I had AIDS, it's your fault. You were blaming the whole company, the whole Yeah, story. I was blaming Wawa when in reality it was my fucking fault for showing up in my underwear in See, a blackout. But that shows that even when we're in a blackout, we cannot blame it on, I was so drunk, I don't even know what I was thinking. Yeah. Because you know, at least me, when I've been drunk, like to the point that I don't remember the next day, and I'll remember within like a few days later, I remember like, let's say I'm really, really wasted right now. Really, 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 really drunk and really horny. And I'm like, so like this, you know, I remember, I know that I'll say something like this, like, damn it. Think about it. Should I fuck him or should I just go home? <laughs> Do you have any condoms? Yeah, yeah, No, yeah. I don't. Adios. Fuck it. I'll bring some. Yeah. And then I'm like, it hits you. Like, you know, and I'm like, actually, my friend is taking me home because I'm really drunk. Yeah. And I know, and other times when I was younger that I did stupid stuff, but I still would use the condom. <clears throat> I knew, like, for example, you know, going to bed with someone that I knew I should have not done it. Mm -hmm. 
I blame it on like, well, I was too drunk. I didn't know yeah, where I was going. Yeah, but now, yeah. honestly, I knew what I was doing. Mm -hmm. I just didn't care at the yeah. moment. That's the thing I didn't care. Well, in a way, like, if you blame everything on being drunk, there's like no accountability and it takes away your like agency as a person like you are just this like lost soul that has no ability to choose right and wrong i will say alcohol does affect things but like if you drunk drive and kill someone you're getting charged for manslaughter but if you get drunk and have sex with someone you can go oh i didn't know they took advantage of me it's like well why it can't be you can't pick and choose it's not like yeah. a buffet you know but i will say if you're drugged no one in their right mind has the ability to say like yes or no and some people do get black out to the point where they lose the ability to have consent and that's not okay either. i did you when know? i got but that's that's why alcohol is so scary you know because sometimes you just your brain shuts off but you're still driving the car you know it's very scary have you ever been drugged or you know given something by your friends like you know um hangover kind of experience you know one of your friends gives slips you something or gives you something oh no <coughs> no again knock on wood thank god i have good friends but i mean i never never got drugged i always drugged myself <laughs> i always took as many drugs as possible but i never got slipped a, a drug uh and i have friends that have accidentally smoked meth or crack because that's how they someone put it in like a blunt or yeah. something and thank god that never happened to me i was in rehab with a guy who got addicted to crack because someone put uh put it in like weed or something yeah. and he smoked it and was like off to the races so i'm very fortunate about that yeah that's good i got roofied in vegas that was horrible. oh no horrible. before covid yeah way before COVID. Oh, this was god. like this was like at the beginning of my career this was like the first this was my first trip to vegas i was staying at the hot rock and I, the crazy thing is that years later, the group that of guys that I was talking with is like a guy that is like, imagine I'm sitting, <clears throat> I'm standing over there, like, you know, mm -hmm. 10 feet away with a group of people. And you can see me like in the middle facing away from right. whoever is sitting here and whoever's sitting here on this side took a picture. Oh God. And they sent it to me like years later, like, hey, is this you? And all I see is just like me being like, but like from behind so yeah. i'm like who like what creep anyway so Jesus. those guys i was hanging out with those bunch of guys at mm -hmm. the hard rock and i had a photo shoot later today because i wanted to go to the pool in the morning get some sun a little drink here and there because they had a party going on and then i was gonna have a photo shoot at three or four well having fun i go get a mojito as soon as i taste the mojito it was bitter it tasted like baking soda with lime juice or something it was just disgusting but obviously me yeah yeah doesn't taste good i was like and it was a fucking cup like this like oh, the God. huge mcdonald's yeah, cup yeah, like yeah. that and i was like this like quarter before i finished it and i go to the thing and i'm like i can't take this more i'm like this taste is horrible it tastes like someone put um bacon soda and the lady looked at me and she looked to the side and she Rather than she's like, no worries, dumped it. She made me a different one right away and gave it to me. And I'm like, you know how to make drinks, girl. This is right, one. yeah, because that one's not drugged. This one was perfect. Well, oh, no. I'm sitting down, and then within, I want to say, like 20, 30 minutes, suddenly I'm, I get up and I'm like, whoa. And then everything starts moving like in the movies. Ugh. Starts moving like this, and I'm like, oh. And immediately, like, my instincts kicked in, and I'm like, fuck, I've been drugged. So I'm like, I did smoke weed earlier, and that's what I thought first. I'm like, maybe mm -hmm. it's the weed, but I'm like, no, this is different. And I can taste uh. the medicine on my mouth. I'm like, nope. I remember I, gra I grabbed my stuff, but I left my bag, like mm -hmm. the pool bag that I had. It was like a five, ten dollar one. But I grabbed my phone, I grabbed my wallet, I just grabbed the two, three things that I needed, that I knew that I needed. And I left the thing and I was like, can you guys check on my purse? I'll be right back. But I just left it as a deco because I'm like, I don't want them to think that I'm actually leaving. Mm -hmm. So, because I was like, if they did this to me, they're 
is watching me. They're they know mm. they're gonna follow me. So I oh, so you think someone from the bar did it to you? Or or someone paid someone because that oh drink to follow me. you and then oh yeah yeah because the yeah, drink yeah. I did it's not like the bartender you know sent right, it this right. way or a waiter gave it to me. I went to the bar and the bartender gave me the drink. You know, so somebody could have been like, hey, you know, put something on her drink. Right, bottle. right. You never know. Or maybe it was meant for someone else. I ended up getting it. I don't know. So I'm feeling bad. And then I grab my stuff. And then I go inside the hotel and I tell the security at the elevator. I was like, can you please make sure that nobody follows me? Nobody gets in the elevator with me. I don't feel good. I think I've been drunk. And she's like, he's like, do you want us to call security? I'm like, no, no, no. I'm fine. But I just... Please make sure no one gets in the elevator. God, that's so scary. He almost called the security and made a big deal. I was like, mm. yeah, yeah, I just yeah. went and pressed the button. And when I was getting close to my floor, I pressed three buttons. So he didn't, the person right, didn't know where right, I got right. Wow. So as I'm walking and I'm walking, you know how the hotels are. You walk outside of the elevator, then yeah, you yeah. walk this like hot, hot, hotels, yeah, yeah. I mean, elevator room, whatever. And then you walk to the hotel. My room was at the end of the end of the end. So I remember like walking and then suddenly just like walking again the, the walk oh, and then God, it just yeah. went like this until I'm like crawling. I get to my door and I'm like, yeah, just yeah. make it. I make it and I close the door behind me and my photographer calls me. He's like, hey, I'm downstairs. You Are you ready? Because his equipment was in my room right. and I'm like, I think I've been drugged. Oh no. <laughs> I don't feel good. And yeah, I told yeah. him what I was happening. And then he came inside the room. Like, literally, he had to push the door. Because right. I was already falling asleep behind the door. And the moment he walked in, he's like, yep, yeah, they roofied you. Like, the whole room smelled. Like, I could have died because of how much they put in my drink. Oh, my God. Because it was a lot. This is it's how, so evil. This is how fucking horrible it was. It was Friday. I remember it was Friday at 4 when my photographer left you know he's like just keep this in mind um, you're in bed nothing happened I'm leaving mm -hmm. I'll check on you but you're fine you know right, when you right, wake right. up remember that you are, are okay fine. Right, right. I'm like okay so then I'm having these dreams and then I'm like dehydrating in my dreams and I'm like oh, I got it. <laughs> and then suddenly I wake up and I'm like yeah, yeah. throw it up everything like because I could taste the medicine it was Monday 10 p.m. when I woke up Jesus so I slept Christ. Saturday Sunday and Monday no food what no a fucking water, nightmare and I was just there Jesus I could have died because of like how much Did you try to sue the hotel I'm not that evil. One, two. I was very naive. Yeah. You know, I and I yeah, was. You were young, right? Yeah, I was twenty-two. Oh my god. So I wasn't really look twenty-three. I wasn't really looking after. Did anybody you. think you were dead? I mean, how did that guy come and check on you again? And yes, he called me and called me, but and then he right. didn't have the gear that the night, uh. so it was horrible. But since then, I'm also the same more cautious also with drinks of course, now. Yeah. It's like when they give me a drink, you know, or someone is like, hey, can I buy you a drink? Mm -hmm. I'm like, sure. I'll get the drink and the first thing is like, you take a sip. Oh, yeah. Like, I'll drink whatever they give yeah. me, but you take a sip first. Yeah. I remember one time I was at a bar and I saw a girl I liked at the, I was like, really drunk. Oh, you would want me to set mm -hmm. the number now. I, uh, I was really drunk, and I was like, bartender, get her a drink, you say it's for me. And when she got it, I looked at her, and I was like, hello, and she gave it back, and was like, I don't want it. And I don't know if she thought I roofied it, or just because I was gross, <laughs> but either way, she did not take it. I was yeah, like, yeah. I'm never gonna buy it. I, I tried to do that smooth, like, movie thing of, like, that girl down there a drink and she was not so about it yeah 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 yeah. she was not about it <laughs> yeah there's some there, there's places and times when you can and there's places when like no 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 yeah i realize i'm not that kind you of you don't guy. take alcohol from strangers yeah. i'm i'm know. more of a i get to pick you up with my personality i'm not i'm not a guy that at the end of the bar you see me and you're like I'll go home with him. I gotta like make you laugh a while first, you know. I get it. Now, yeah. see if it's a, if it was a joint. Nowadays, everybody's like, yeah, of uh, course. Yeah, yeah, Let's smoke yeah. a joint together, yeah. you know. 
I feel like smoking just like cigarettes. You know, like when you go out to the bar and you don't have a cigarette, yeah. and you're like in a pump, and suddenly you have like three friends. Yeah, and like, yeah. You just talk with people. That's what I feel like smoking was such a communicative activity of like, especially when you could smoke indoors. You it's like very social. Go up to next to someone, you use the ashtray, you start talking, you make friends, and it. it I think we should bring smoking back and get people talking that normally wouldn't talk. And uh, it mm -hmm. would fix relations with everything, I think. And also, I wouldn't have to leave the bar or hotel to smoke outside. Vote for me for president 2024. Mm. <laughs> See, what makes me happy about not be, I because I, I, I'm i with you on being able to smoke at the bar, mm -hmm. with friends, be at the night, at the yeah, dance yeah. floor and smoking, maybe because it was fun back then. But, yeah, like coming back out of the back home, with the smell of cigarettes. Yes, on your that's clothing. what everyone told someone me. Someone yeah. burned, like, these days, imagine someone smoking, you'll go home with like oh, yeah, three, four, holes five holes right, from right. ashes. That's why I'm glad that they don't allow smoking inside anymore. But also, if, 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 if we knew people were like cautious, then I would be all up for it. Yeah. But apparently us humans, we cannot have nice things. And no. if we have them, no, Somebody else wants to come them. and yeah, destroy yeah. them. Yep. Like yeah, the fucking it. time mm -hmm. difference from daylight saving and now they want, like you were saying, they want to make it just a permanent thing. Like, why do you want to fix something when it's not fucking broken? Well, my thing is like, we're, we're like, hey, can we get universal health care? Can we erase student debt? Can we maybe not enter a third world war or just at least lower gas prices? No, and they're like, stupid. no, 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 we can't do that. But what we can do is prove to you that time is not real. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I guess we'll settle for that. What was one thing that, same shit. Um, oh. So this guy that is running, I don't forget, for senator or something, mm -hmm. or he's trying to pass a bail in, I think, Texas, basically for teachers and students, all of them to out trans kids. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you read about that. Mm -hmm. So he's trying to have, you know, everyone, teachers and everyone out trans kids. And by outing them, if they find out that their parents are like, okay, with them being trans, like helping them with the transition mm -hmm. and stuff they will face charges for um, child, endangerment. child endangerment because they're putting their child on the <sighs> and guess what his child is a trans and the reason that's, that's why, the reason always, that why he's always doing happens it. man all these back in the day with these anti-gay legislations republicans against gay marriage <coughs> they were always found to be getting their dick sucked in a bathroom at an airport. Or when like I was they were like escort, secretly gay. When I was an escort, most of my fans, so clients were Republicans. And a lot of them, I would see them on TV and I'm like, why are you voting against my rights when yeah. here you are sucking my dick? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're paying me with like government funds. Like what the fuck? You I know, know. Like, it's and, crazy. And here they are like trashing it, but that's what politics are. Yeah. So anyway, when, um, you know this but when I saw this I'm like okay so let me get this right okay so in Texas you know where everyone owns a gun like mm -hmm. even the you know kid in preschool mm -hmm. can own a gun they there's like a big problem of mass shootings in schools it's mm -hmm. not just everywhere it's in schools it's in uh, malls it's uh, mm -hmm. but it's been affected mostly in schools you know Columbine mm -hmm. um, all of these you know schools that have been attacked and there's they, they can do so much to help them like you know help, helping with banning um, not banning guns but like making it more tough for someone mm -hmm. that it shouldn't have a gun have a gun that's not important Let's make sure that trans kids don't make it into the school. That's what right, we're afraid of. Right, right, right. I was one of the trans kids who that I went to school, and I'm so glad the, of the school respected me because there was, I didn't thought about this. When I, one year I go to school as a, one year I go to high school as a boy, and then next year I'm like, I already felt comfortable with the students and stuff. I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm a girl. And the next, the next year I came as a woman. 
And I, I wonder why it wasn't a big deal then, and now it's like this huge, colossal thing that has to be addressed by everyone. Because it's more public. Back mm -hmm. in the day, it was like, okay, they, we know they exist, but they're just a few rats in, mm -hmm. you know, in my kitchen, so I'm not gonna worry about it. <laughs> but because now there's like multiplying, right, right. now I need to do something about it. Even right. though they're not affecting me, mm -hmm. you know, they're just here looking for a place to live. Why do you think the trans population is multiplying? Because we're feeling more comfortable um, coming out. Mm -hmm. Like before, I would have not been a trans woman if my dad would have like forced me not to. Why? Mm -hmm. Because my dad's gay. So he said, if you're going to be gay, be gay, like men, that's fine. But I don't want you dressing up like a woman because you're not a woman. Mm -hmm. You're going to make fun of yourself. You're not going to look good. You're going to mm -hmm. look like a clown. And what is people going to think about me? Mm -hmm. And when I mean not about what people are going to think about me, it's not me. It's him. What are they right, going to think about right, him? Right, right, right. So, <clears throat> in my mind, I'm like, so you want me to be, I'm, and I tell him, like, you want me to be like you, like, be a man all my life and get married and have kids and pretend that I can cover the sun with my finger. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm 30 years old, realize that I like dick and then abandon my kids right. to pursue that dick oh. like you did. And he just looked at me like this because it was the truth, you know? Yeah. Good so, you. but he tells me, he's like, you know, but I understand what, where he was coming from. Of course. But I decided to come out because I had the support from his own friends, his gay friends from the club. Mm -hmm. You know, they would tell him like, if your son is like this, he's gonna be like this forever. If she wants to become a woman, yeah. she will. There's nothing you can do to avoid it other mm -hmm. than to like be there for him, rather make yeah. sure that, you know, he doesn't make mistakes, blah, blah, blah. Obviously he made the mistakes because I moved out of my house when I was 15 and I pursued my own I guess happiness at that moment mm -hmm. and it was because I was by myself and I didn't have no one to question me or mm -hmm. like with the family because I basically like marked my line and I'm like this is your territory this is my territory right, right, and right. I walked as far away from that line as possible mm -hmm. for years and that made it very easy for me to once I went to school, yourself. embrace yeah. myself and then the school embraced me and when the best thing that the school did for me that made me feel accepted and appreciated was when there was an issue. It was not really an issue between the students. They were fine with me going to the boys' bathroom or the girls' bathroom. They really didn't care. But it was with the teachers. Like somehow one of the teachers that apparently I think he had a crush for me or something. Oh, he, God. he was like, well, I don't know how the girls will feel about, you know, having a man dressed as a woman in the bathroom. And I'm like, you motherfucker. So the, uh, the, the principal was like a very good friend of mine. Besides being the principal, she was like, she was always very involved with the students. Mm. You know, she would come and sit down with us in the <clears throat> lunch breaks and stuff. Mm. So she told, she came up, she's like, well, I guess she can use the boys' bathroom. She can use the girls' bathroom. Yeah. You're going to use the teacher's bathroom. Ha! I had my yeah. own key for the teacher's bathroom. Bathrooms nice. because it was just a one bathroom. Right, right. Go in and lock it. Hell and yeah. I loved it. That was like getting that key to the bathroom. That made me feel you care for me. You care yeah, for my safety because yeah. also I could have been beat up in the boys' bathroom if I was not allowed in the girls' bathroom. Or I could be beat up by the popular girls in the girls' bathroom yeah. because now I'm becoming popular for the reasons that they cannot be popular yeah, yeah. of. So I, t I faced so many challenges, but it was because of the people that I had around me made me feel comfortable to come out. So now with seeing RuPaul and being accepted, now seeing um, Euphoria, now seeing all these shows that are accepting um, Janet, um, Mark. Mark, amazing writer, um, the, the serious pose with all the trans cast, uh, Laverne Cox, Carmen Carrera, all these amazing female, trans female performers coming mm -hmm. out are giving the new generations leverage, or not mm -hmm. leverage, but they're he's giving hope them that hope and, of yeah. I can be like them at one point. Now I can see myself mm -hmm. in them. Like, my superheroes when I was growing up was Wonder Woman, was 
was always females. They were right, never, right. you know, Superman. Superman was my boyfriend. You know, <laughs> Batman was my lover. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, Spider-Man was, you know, the boy that will sneak in my room at night. Those were my, you know, fantasies yeah, yeah, with them, yeah. but I never wanted to but be But you them. wanted to be I wanted Wonder to be Woman, the female Superwoman. version. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Catwoman. So now that, you know, I was looking for representation, someone that reminds me of me, someone that looks like me out there. Right. And it made me feel like I was all by myself because there was none out there. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm an adult and I see all these people, I'm like, that warms my heart because if I was, you know, a teenager at this moment, seeing all these, you know, shows about trans women will give me the balls to go and come to my parents and be like, I am a woman. Mm -hmm. I haven't been honest with myself, but I'm a woman and when I want to live like this, sure, I'll get the rejection, I'll get the support. I don't know. But at least I feel like I, seeing all this embraced by others mm -hmm. gives me the hope that it, it could have worked out for mm -hmm. me, you know? But I mean, in a sense, it did work out for you and you were so headstrong and driven that you didn't even really need those things because you knew it was such a part of you. You well, know. the thing is that it was different because I never told, for the first years of my life as Jesse, through 16 until, to, I got into the industry, basically my life was all a lie. Mm. Because when I went to work, I had um, uh, long hair, I had like stuff in my boobs, so I, I was very oh, feminine, so yeah. not a lot of, not, nobody knew that I was a trans woman unless mm -hmm. Someone was gonna You're get like in my pants, or I told them, told them right, you know. Right, yeah. I was, I had to work. I went to work at a bar because mm -hmm. I couldn't find a job at McDonald's or anywhere because they would be asking me for mm -hmm. <coughs> an ID and permission from my parents. So I had to work oh, at fuck. a bar, yeah. at a restaurant bar. When I was 16, 17, and 18, it, mm -hmm. I was working at this bar that during the day was a restaurant and at night it became a bar. So I would work the night shifts right, and I would right. do this, what it's called, you know, like. Basically, it's not like really prostituting, but it's like escorting cut in a way because like a guy, you can you will buy me a drink like a beer for eight dollars, mm -hmm. and the bar will keep four, and I will keep four. Mm -hmm. Or if you buy me like a margarita for ten dollars, the bar will keep two dollars, right. and then eight dollars were for me. You know. So like when you get a lap dance at a strip club, like twenty fives of you, and then fifties to the to the bar, Same, right, right, some, something yeah, like yeah. that. But this was with drinks, and you know. So the way I would do it is like, you know, I would go clean the table, sit with them, like, oh, nice, thank you for the beer, this much. Perfect, cheers. So you were cheers. like a professional flirter. Of course, and then yeah. I'm like, I'll be right back, boys. Let me go clean the other table. I will take my beer, and I'm like, I'm taking it because I don't want to be roofie. Yeah. At that moment, I was joking. Never thought that years yeah, later right? it was going to happen for us. So then I take my beer and I will go to the next table and I'm like, hey guys, move your beers. Look and then at I'll you. sit down and I'm like, God damn. It's ten dollars for the beer. And I resold that same beer to like my eight or ten tables that I had. Because I didn't want it to drink, you know, right. and I still wanted to make my money. So but that's what Art. I was like, yeah. you know, that's how I work myself around it. And that's why it became very normal for me. It wasn't until I became uh porn star that I didn't have that chance of being undercover again right, right. because at, at this moment the lie thank god all the lies fall down yeah. because the first thing the first lie that I would told was the l truth that I didn't say like hi what's your name my name is Jesse Dubai instead of being like my name is Jesse Dubai oh by the way I know you have you want something with me right. I'm a trans woman Right, so it was like lie by omission. Yes, right. You know, and mm -hmm. and where was this? Where did here, you United States. Right, in what state? Denver, Colorado. Denver, okay. Like when guys will ask me, like, do you have any kids? I'll be like, no. Do you want any kids? I, I would say like something like, no, I'm not ready for them, or no, right, I right. can't have kids. But I never said, oh, I don't can't have them because I have a penis instead of a vagina. Right. You know? Yeah. It was until like sometimes the guy was like on top of me, kissing me, telling me he loves me, and I'm like. <laughs> something I have to tell you six months later yeah. you know not because I wanted to lie with them or I was just lying to boys but I wanted to make sure that before I told them the truth they liked you they liked me mm -hmm. and you know they were not gonna beat me up or hurt me yeah but in the process we ended up hurting each other because they will totally. really fall for me I will fall for them and 
the longer that I spent time with them, the longer that I, the harder it became, how do I tell them until I told them and things will go sour or not so sour, but they never went a hundred percent happy for me. Yeah. And that was very sad because it was, I have to start all over again. And the next time that I started, I didn't want it to start with a lie. Mm. I wanted to start with the truth, but it was so hard because oh, I can imagine that people will just guys will just see me as just a sex object or I was the girlfriend that you fuck and you visit after the club when you couldn't mm. pick up anything but it's not the girl that you take home yeah you know yeah. and I was tired of that and it wasn't until I got into the industry that when people's like so what are you what is your name here Google yes, <laughs> yeah yeah that's me have a good day and I'll walk away right and then I'll text her with text them from my phone because they had already changed phone mm. to me I'll be like so what do you think yeah. I, I didn't have to be there for the tough yeah. talk whether they replied or not I knew the answer and they all replied because at this moment it was like oh that's cool you know thanks for yeah, telling yeah. me it's not, not I'm not into that right but I believe that you will be a really good friend and I'm really good friends with a lot of them that we had you know chemistry or like mm -hmm. we wanted to have sex but I'm not what they're looking for. I didn't want it to like ruin a friendship just right, to have their right. dick in my mouth. And it worked out great because now we're friends. And they, those are the guys that sometimes I'll speak with them. And I'm like, remember like how I was and how we changed and like, cause I'm writing a book. So I had to go back to people that knew me so I could get their perspective of who I was on their eyes, not just my version. I also right, want to understand right, right. what kind of person I was upon others you know mm -hmm. but back to like what you're saying why are they reproducing if it's because of that that now it's making it so easier to say the truth you know now mm -hmm. little by little even though like you know sometimes in some states we're losing our rights or you know we we run we live with the fear of being persecuted for just existing that doesn't stop us instead it pushes us more forward to be like fine you can fight me you can fight my group of 10 mm. you can fight my group of 20 but can you fight my army of a hundred thousand million billion all over the world yeah you can't it's like we're queer we're here and we're not going anywhere so deal with it boom otherwise you know none no girls will be coming out and yeah. being this successful women that they are mm -hmm. you know and i think the more we spend time acknowledging like when like for example being bi when mm -hmm. people says oh you're bi oh that's cool uh, i mean i'm straight but mm -hmm. i mean you're you're bi that's, that's kind of cool you're gay oh you're gay that's cool mm -hmm. oh you're transsexual you look so like a man i i would have never thought that you're transsexual. So it's see how it changes? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're bi. Perfect. Oh, you're transsexual. Well, I being bi, it's it's very strange in terms of like you get a lot of shit from both sides, I of think. Course. To gay people, you're just gay and you don't know it yet. To straight people, you're gay and you're lying. <laughs> you know, so it's always <laughs> like, you know, women are always like, I support it good for you until you get in a relationship and then they're super I don't want to see know. you sucking dick yeah I they have something I don't have you're gonna leave me for a man or a trans woman it's like it, it's I, I don't know I mean it's it's hard to navigate at times but I think um, that's why I'm open about it because you know I mean I'm not on the level of Janet Mock or Laverne Cox or you but I do think that being honest and living truthfully as to who I am, you know, lets more people know that it's okay and that they can come out and live that type of life. And also, I'm open about being with trans women because I feel like more men need to be comfortable with that because a lot of guys are, you know, into trans women and they feel like shame and they feel whatever. And so I try to talk about it as a means of like, it doesn't mean anything other than you are attracted to another person you that's know? it yeah it doesn't really define you you know <clears throat> see I get this mistake with a lot of people that they're like 
if I am interested in, to, in a TS girl, like, does that make me gay? Or does that make me bi? I'm like, well, I guess it will make you, like, bi curious. I mean, mm -hmm. are you attracted because we have a penis? Or are you attracted because we look like a female mm -hmm. and you've fucked so much females already that you're, like, you know, right. tired of them that you want to try something different and because we're feminine you know you're okay with it because mm -hmm. in your mind you play that we're not men we're women you know mm -hmm. and they always end up labeling themselves wrong like oh i'm gay because i like this or no i'm not gay i'm straight because i like that i'm like look if you're gonna label yourself first learn what your label is mm. don't label yourself just because you you think you're that like figure right. out who you are and then later you're gonna realize that you don't need a label because right. if i were to for example if i were to put a label on me the fucking label would be this big because i am a bisexual transsexual woman and i also sometimes feel like i wish i could like take my tits out and just walk out like when i was a like mm. it would be cool to be a boy one day and a girl another yeah, like, yeah. you know but that's like the trend that is going on now, nowadays like you know not to talk shit about her but you know she's the only person that I know so far that has been close to me Chanel Santini she transitioned into a beautiful trans woman you know she did transition she took her breast out um, she's living as Cameron King mm -hmm. now and um, he's dating a trans male performer they make a beautiful couple but what i think happened with her is that she thought that it was she became a trans because it was more accepting to look feminine when you're a trans than when you're a gay guy mm -hmm. and now that it's being more accepted like rupaul shows mm -hmm. that you can be a boy during the day and a girl at night yeah. it, it makes them more and f sexual fluent it made it come like easier for her to be like I yeah. realize that maybe this is not what I want well, anymore. I mean, I think you said it with like sexual fluency or being fluid. Like, nobody is totally straight, and nobody, you know, I mean, I think we're getting to a point where like people are becoming more adventurous. It's like, if you're with a trans woman, are you gay? No. But when you have a dick down your throat and you can't speak or breathe, you're not the straightest guy to ever live. Yeah. But that's okay. And it's like, who cares? I, I hate the labels on everything. Like, even I struggle sometimes with being, like, bisexual. It's like, no, I'm just myself. I like who I like, when I like them, and I do what I want. And I don't care about this or that, you know? Like, I spent so much time in my life hating myself because I thought I was gay and I was supposed to be this and then this and this and this. It's like, I'm, I'm tired of it. Who cares? Who cares? You know? And so I think for that reason, I've kind of haven't really um, uh, gotten, you know, I, I don't feel like I'm a part of the LGBT community, even though I am like the B, you yeah. know, because I've just been straight passing and everything my whole life. And uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm okay with it. I don't think we need to have labels. I don't think if you're with one person one time, it means this or this, you know, I mean, yeah, I don't know. It's like sometimes, it's like the changing of the seasons. In the winter, you dress warm. In the summer, you dress for heat. And, you know, sometimes you like dick. Sometimes you don't. Who cares? Yeah. You know? I totally, totally, totally understand 100%. See, for me, it you're leaning more towards women, trans women or mm -hmm. um, women. And you'll dabble yourself with a guy here and there, as yeah. you know, you're speaking. For me, it's the opposite. For me, I'm into trans men. I'm into men. And I'll play with <coughs> women for work or for like fun if it's a couple. You know? Right, okay. But like for me to go out and be like, oh, I'm gonna go out to the club and find myself a girl. Right. No, it'll be more like, I'm gonna go to the club and find myself a boy. If the boy comes with a girl, she's invited, she's welcome. Right, to okay. Or find myself right. a guy with a pussy, a trans guy. That's right. what attracts me. Well, my, so in a way, we're the same, yeah. but we're just attracted you to femininity, like yin and, yang. and I am attracted yeah. to masculinity. Totally. And I will say, I definitely, like, I've never had a crush on a guy friend. 
I've never like had an emotional connection with a guy that I've been like sexual with. It's like very. It's different. Yeah, like I wouldn't go to a bar to be like, I'm gonna pick up a guy unless it was like a very specific type of guy. Like I couldn't just, you know, like we're with with women. I've every shade of the spectrum of type of girl I've I've been with, but I would never want to be with like a hairy guy. You know, You're into like, femininity. Yeah, right? yeah, you know, I'm very much into femininity. Me, I'm the other way. I yeah. want a guy that is like hairy, like obviously groomed, well taken right. care of, but still hairy, like that it's a man, yeah. mustache, beards, hairy arms, all that calls mm -hmm. my attention, you know? Yeah. I like masculinity. <clears throat> when I'm with couples, it's fine. I like eating the pussy, I like playing with the tits, but at the same time, it's like I play with the, with the girls, not because I... I not, not that I don't like them, of course I do, but it's like I don't feel like I want to fuck you, I want to be friends with you, mm -hmm. I, I want to have like this connection of like, let's mm -hmm. suck the dick together, you suck it now, I suck uh, it now, you suck it now. Yeah, I think we that just identify as horny. I think that's, uh, most people are just horny and they get caught up on the labels and it's like, do what yeah. you want with who you want, who cares, as long as you're safe, you're open and honest. Who cares? Leave your judgment at the door, you know, especially like it annoys me with gay people. They're like, well, you're gay. You just don't know it. Or straight people. They're like, oh, bro, you're fucking gay. You've been with a guy. I'm like, fuck you. No. If there can be like 82 different genders, why can't there be a couple different shades of sexuality? You know? I mean, let's not even go that far. Okay. Let's say that us humans were making a mistake for having sex with people or of our own um, sex. Okay. Oh, wow. I, Bible I, talk with Jesse Dubai. <laughs> let's not go that far. There's animals that yeah. penguins, they mate amongst men. Totally. Dolphins, they have relationships. Lions, mm -hmm. they mate with other male lions. Mm -hmm. Like there's been proof that even animals become yeah. homosexual at one point of their lives mm -hmm. so if animals do it and they don't have like let's say because oh don't look at the tv because you know i don't like my son watching those kind of shows because he's gonna turn gay mm -hmm. bitch my dog never saw any of those shows and he likes sucking his brother's dick his other my other dog so it's it's stupid yeah. to think that you know, because you 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 think your son is seeing something or right. MTV, or because you, you know, you're too focused on your life that you're giving him a cell phone, and now he's looking at porn and looking at all these things right. that you consider bad. But instead of you looking at yourself in the mirror and be like, okay, I'm the bad parent for giving my son a cell phone just to not bother me, and in the process, now he's addicted to porn, he's seen all this, you know, the way other people talk to their parents, and he's mimicking all mm -hmm. that. Is it really my problem that I'm a transsexual and your son follows me on TikTok and right, likes my talks, right, and right. now he wants to be like me? Or is it your mistake as a parent that you couldn't pay attention to your kid and you yeah. let a phone raise your child in bed instead well of yeah i mean how many parents just show an ipad in front of their kid's face because it's easier to have them behave than to actually like interact yeah but the, mm -hmm. the same time it's like the, the more they do it the less they they try, um monitor what yeah, their kids yeah. are doing like sure at first it's like because i have friends that i'm like why does your daughter has a tablet she's eight years old oh, it's fine i monitor everything and I'm like, when was the last time you checked her tablet? Oh my God, I haven't done it. Can you check it for her? And I'm yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And all I'm like, and I, there's been times that I had to delete, not delete conversations, but I had to like get into conversations that I'm like, why are you talking to this person? To my friend's daughter. Mm -hmm. And then I call her out, we bring her mother in, and then she tells us, well, this yeah. guy was telling me that he will send me uh, oh, tokens no. on this game if I showed him oh, pictures no, of my no, taking no. my socks off. Oh God, that's terrible. And she was like, I remember at the point time she was like 11 years old and I got so pissed and I got on the computer and like with the game and like pretending to be her and, and like, so what else do you want to see? Like, do you want to come over? When my mom's not here, like oh we can play God. video games, I was like, I'm gonna drag that motherfucker here by oh. the balls and have the police. But I guess he like 
realized that he was not talking with her You're because he went so away and big. immediately I blocked everything. But that's I that was perfect yeah. time for me to tell my friend, you see what you're doing? Like, yeah. I get that kids can have a phone, can have like, you know, <clears throat> social media, but yeah, at the same regulated. time, it's like, it's your be, job yeah. to be taking care of it. And that's why, that's why I don't think I can be a parent right now because I just don't have the time to dedicate to doing that. You yeah, know? it's a hard it's job. It's such a hard responsibility, and I really admire anyone out there that's doing it, but it is just not for me right now, you know? If you, if you can, if you do not have kids and you're not pregnant, pre- pre- stay away from getting anyone pregnant. It's the best yeah, thing. Yeah, The same way if you are... you should just be a trans woman. So you, you know, if you're you against abortion... Just fuck a tranny. Don't get yeah. your wife pregnant. <laughs> That's the t-shirt. <laughs> That's a right, Jesse I'm going to make a t-shirt for all the wives from my clients. It'll say, my husband fucked Jesse Dubai and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> At least you got something. Oh, and it's going to have like a white stain right here. Oh, like, wow. And all so I got was this cum stain shirt. Exactly. Perfect. I, a millionaire. I fucked the husband and I sent him with the cum rag. Wow. <laughs> well, my love, the time has come for you to get the heck out of my bed. Adios. Adios, motherfucker. Because I'm about to jerk off. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, it was a pleasure having you. It was so fun. We had this whole show planned out of what I was going to ask. But then, like you said earlier, the conversation just flew into something. I love it beautiful we spoke about important topics we got, i got to see your point of view we got to see mine yeah with for, with no further ado please remind them where can they see your podcast uh bye guys on gas digital network gas digital.com uh promo code guys for 25 percent off also it's available on itunes spotify wherever you get your podcasts i also have a sopranos watch along podcast uh, Sopranos Prima Volta, uh, youtube.com slash not Sam. I've never seen Sopranos. Sam Roberts has seen it 10 times over. We're watching it together. It's great. And uh, iAnimal69 on Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram. I'm on the road every weekend. And when you're in New York City, you can see me at the Comedy Cellar every night of the week. Awesome. Well, as you bitches know, I am Mama Jesse. You guys can follow me, obviously, if you guys haven't, um, if this is the first time you see this podcast, you guys can follow my social media at Instagram, the Jesse Dubai, Twitter, TS Jesse, uh, TikTok, the Jesse Dubai, as well as listen to this version of, if you're listening to this podcast, you can watch the video of it on my YouTube channel. And if you're watching the YouTube channel, this video on the YouTube channel and you're driving, don't. Just go <laughs> to my podcast and listen to my podcast while you're driving. That's why. Yeah. Anyway, bitches. Till next time. Bye. She likes gossip.